Hi, I'm Ishan Miner reporting for Kids First. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Andy Trimlett, director of PBS SoCal's new disaster preparedness production, What a Disaster. Andy is an Emmy award-winning public te television producer. He's worked on productions in Los Angeles, Honolulu, Budapest, Vienna, the Grand Canyon, Alaska, Amman, and Jerusalem, among other places. Additionally, he is PBS SoCal's and KC ET's Director of D Digital Fundraising and On-Air Fundraising. Thanks so much for taking the time out to speak with me, Andy. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So let's get started with what motivated you to direct What a Disaster. My boss, actually, um, uh, Maura Daly Finney, um, came up with an idea to do an emergency preparedness show. Um, she was in the Loma Prieta earthquake back in 1989, which, quite frankly, I hadn't even heard of. Uh, <laughs> but it was a big deal, and um, she got so freaked out by that that she's kind of become a disaster preparedness nut ever since. So um, she, uh, she decided, like, let's, let's try to make a show and see how it goes. <laughs> how have you been personally affected by the forest fires in SoCal? Yeah, yeah um, I mean... Every time one of those happens, it's, you know, thankfully, um, knock on wood, our, uh, um, our home hasn't been hit by anything, but, you know, we're, it's, you know, we see the, um, the smoke everywhere, and I have a number of friends who have lost their homes over the years, so um, it's, it's definitely very real in my life. And um, you've worked on so many different productions, so what's different about the production process of a game show like What a Disaster? <laughs> yeah, this is actually the first game show that I've ever uh, even attempted to work on. Uh, it was definitely different uh, than producing, say, a documentary or you know, a music show, something like that. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, the, you know, the biggest um, you know the biggest challenges were really a result of um, of COVID, because you know, like we couldn't just bring everyone into the studio. Um, but that really you know, actually led to some kind of creative ideas where we could put people in their homes and it's actually more fun that way because when people are in their homes, you know, you're, you're, you can actually see whether real time they are prepared for a disaster or not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely interesting. We had, uh, we had 27 cameras on this shoot. Um, so there were the three cameras in the studio and then, um, each of the families, uh, we had eight cameras in each house, um, mostly just little GoPro cameras, um, and then one big camera. But um, it was definitely a definitely a big project to edit the whole thing. <laughs> and I guess I don't even have to ask you: Did COVID nineteen affect your work on this film? Because it's obvious it did. So tell me more about that. Yeah, um, it was you know it was definitely interesting. We um, we wanted to make the crews as small as possible, um, so that we're you know we were not having large gatherings of people. Um, none of our, we, we had no camera um, operators uh, at all during the production. So at the houses, um, the families would walk out of the house um, and they walked out of the house in the morning and then we had two people go in and set up everything. Um, and then they pressed record on all the cameras and then walked out of the house for the entire production. So that <laughs> there was no one monitoring those cameras during the entire production which uh, I'm not gonna lie, was a little nerve wracking. Uh, <laughs> um, but, and then we did um, the whole thing we did over Zoom. So, um, you know, we had Jay Jackson and the judges in the studio and we were on a Zoom call with all the families. So they would, um, you know, they stare at their camera and they had the Zoom call on the camera. And um, they also had, uh, um, I came up with this plan to have, so we could have move around with the families occasionally. Um, they had a tablet, and then in order to record what was on the tablet, um, <laughs> came up with a very sophisticated idea of uh, taping a GoPro to the back of the tablet. So, <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, and then in this, in, even in the studio, we had no camera operators. We only had we only had two people. Everybody was, you know, all the crew were masked, of course. Um, but it was, you know, it was a big challenge. Uh, but thankfully, um, it's been. It's been a few weeks now, and um, everybody's healthy, so. Yeah, yeah, and it came together beautifully as well, yeah. So how did you recruit the three families in this film? So what was that casting process like? <laughs> yeah, um, it was definitely, um, you know, we, we don't, we've never done this. I don't think this is, we've, we've ever had a game show in the history of P 
PBS SoCal and KCET. I could be lying to you, but I'm pretty sure we haven't. So we didn't have like a whole system set up for that. So it was really kind of a lot of by hook and by crook. You know, we sent out emails, um, kind of asked around, you know, you get one person to the next person and eventually found these three amazing families. Um, one thing that was really a challenge was because this is a disaster preparedness show, if we had told the families this is a disaster preparedness show, then they could have, you know, packed like a giant bag full of stuff. And you know, like, you know, if I heard that I want to be on a disaster preparedness game show, I'd go out to Costco and I'd be, you know, like I'd have a huge amount of stuff all ready to go. And that wouldn't be nearly as fun. Um, so we had to keep it a secret. So we just said it was a game show. And <laughs> they really didn't find out until like right then on camera um, when we were recording the show what, what the show was going to be about, which was fun. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> For you personally, did you learn anything new about disaster preparedness in the making of this film? So I finally uh, put to rest the question of do you or do you not hide in a doorway when an earthquake strikes? Uh, <laughs> which is, of course, a rumor that everyone's heard for a long time. Um, a number of people take it as fact. Um, there was apparently um, a picture of a house from, I can't remember which earthquake, but a long time ago that was um, where the only thing standing was the doorway. Um, the th and then that's, that picture is what led to this entire notion that you don't, or you stand in a doorway during an earthquake because that's what will protect you. Turns out that was an adobe house. And very few of us in California these days live in adobe houses. So <laughs> if you live in an adobe house, then, you know, the doorway might be good to go. But um, for the rest of us, uh, don't stand in the doorway. <laughs> go under a sturdy table or lay in your bed, put a pillow over your head, you know, keep your head covered. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your favorite part of making this film? You know, there were lots of challenges, but I'm sure there were some fun parts, too. Yeah, I mean, just just watching the families like you know, go through all this, you know, I had it in my head, like what this would be like, you know, all these families running around, but actually seeing like, you know, <laughs> the, the little Smith kid, like Luke Smith, like running around going, Teddy, I need my Teddy. And he's like getting his teddy bear in the middle of the, you know, the disaster. And, you know, seeing all just kind of the, the crazy stuff play out. There were so many just hilarious moments. And, you know, it was really like nerve wracking leading up to this because there were so many new things that were going on. There were so many, you know, challenges to the production. Um, but once we started recording and um, I heard uh, my associate producer, Janaya, just bust up laughing like <laughs> over in the, the office because we're all in like separate locations, just even in the studio area. She just starts busting up laughing. I'm like, OK, I think we're going to be good. Because <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, you know, like every other kind of um, disaster preparedness show, like, like when, my, when, when Moore first came to me and said like she wanted to make a disaster preparedness show, the first thing I thought was like, I really can't think of anything more boring than disaster preparedness. <laughs> like, how can you make that watchable on television? Because um, a lot of it is like, we're gonna scare you into getting prepared, you know, like it's, it, you know, this could happen to you and this could happen to your family. And, really so much of the time that doesn't really leave you wanting to prepare. It just leaves you kind of scared. And, and, and you think, oh, no, I, I, I'm scared. And if something bad happens, I'm, 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 everything's ruined. And so what we wanted to do was make a show that was like fun and just got you excited about disaster preparedness. You know, like this is something you can do with your family. It's something that can be fun and silly and, and, and isn't a, a scary thing that takes months of your life. It's something you can do in an afternoon as a fun, you know, a fun project. Absolutely, and I think it's it's unique that it's uh, interactive, fun, family friendly, and also you know about disaster preparedness. We normally see just like signs, like poster boards. This is, I think, the first game show that's ever been produced <laughs> uh, to to help educate families about disasters. Disasters. <laughs> I I think it might be. I I I haven't found any other in Google searches, so <laughs> I'm not sure what award that gets me, but. But it's fun. It's fun to say. <laughs> so, uh, kind of trailing off of that, what do you hope that families take away from this film? I really hope that this motivates families to, you know, look at their own disaster preparedness situation, figure out like, 
you know, maybe they haven't, they don't, they don't have anything ready to go. Like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's get the kids together. Let's put together a go back. Like, hey, what do you need? You know, let's let's do it in five minutes. Five minutes. You got five minutes to figure out what um, what items you can put in this bag, and that's what you get to take with you. You know, if we have to leave the house forever, so go, and then you, you make a game of it, and um, and have fun with it, and and just do it. Most importantly, like even if if you don't want, if you want to have no one fun, if you're like I don't believe in fun. Okay, we'll just get prepared. <laughs> but <laughs> so the more families that, that are motivated to get prepared um, by this show, the better. Uh, that's that's sort of the main main goal of the show. Totally, yeah. I think it's definitely a, a great model to have fun and also stay safe. And then the the other um, you know the other part of the show is it is a fundraising special. So. Um, uh, every you know, there's going to be a couple of um, fundraising breaks where we talk about the show and um, how important it is to make a contribution to PBS SoCal and KCET. And when you when you make a donation, you can either um, you can get we're offering as thank you gifts um, disaster kits, so you can look, get started on your own kit. And um, if you make a donation at our our high level, you'll even be able to not only get your own kit, but you'll um, we can donate a kit to a family in need. So you'll kind of be doing your bit to. Um, get other families prepared around California, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking with me, Andy. As a Texas kid, actually, I really, really enjoyed watching this, and I found this to be really educational. So amazing, amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. What a Disaster premieres in Southern California this Thanksgiving on Thursday, November 26th at 7 p.m. on PBS SoCal and encores on Saturday, November 28th at 8 p.m. on KCET. This is Ishan Mani reporting for Kids First, signing off. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss my next interview or those of my awesome Kids First teammates. Bye!